In Voices from Milan, we present different perspectives on active learning, basing on the experiences that our teachers did during the pilots. Let's go through some of them in order to reflect upon key messages coming out from our lesson learned and open up the debate. A first question you may ask is which soft skills can be developed through active learning? A variety of them. For example, at the University of Montpellier, the teacher of design thinking introduced active learning in our courses since she believed this is the most appropriate way to foster the development of skills like creativity, communication, leadership, dealing with failure and teamwork. She explains that these skills are mostly required by the labor market, particularly in the management field. Active learning might help reduce the gap between university teaching and labor market requirements that different studies and reports have highlighted. For example, in 2014, a study by McKinsey concluded that universities and companies seem to live in parallel worlds since the educational providers do not understand the needs of the labor market. This is why in the last years, different universities started offering soft skill courses in order to fill this gap. During the first phase of the Land for Life project, we carried out a transnational analysis on innovative higher education learning models on soft skills. We found that the soft skills most commonly taught at universities are communication, critical thinking and teamwork. These skills are developed through active learning methods like collaborative learning, project-based learning, and experiential learning. The assessment is carried out through evaluation grids, self and peer assessment tools, and portfolios. Which differences in terms of soft skill development can be observed among the different fields? Different jobs might need different skills although some of them are transversal and transferable from one economic sector to another. The European Union carried out a research on this subject, basing on existing experiences and available information from different sector studies and job offers. This research has identified generic and specific transferable skills by sectors and by occupations. Some skills, like creativity, communication and teamwork, are transversal to different fields. At Campus Biomedical University, soft skill courses have been embedded in the curriculum since the beginning in order to foster the employability of students graduating in food sciences and technologies. A research carried out by Flynn and colleagues in 2012 has identified the ideal skills of food scientists and technologists in Europe. Of the over 3,300 skill ideas provided, the most desired skill overall was communication, followed by problem solving and demonstrating positive attitudes and behavior. You might wonder whether active learning is appropriate for every subject. Some teachers think that active learning might be used only in some courses, like those connected with humanities, social studies and education. However, Different studies have highlighted the importance of active learning for STEM education. A review of research produced by Prince in 2004 found considerable support for active learning in engineering education. A meta-analysis of 225 studies carried out in 2014 by Freeman and colleagues indicated that average examination scores improved by about 6% in classes with active learning, and that students in classes with traditional lecturing were 1.5 times more likely to fail than were students in classes with active learning. More recently, a further meta-analysis published by Theobald and colleagues in 2020 demonstrated that active learning narrows achievement gaps for underrepresented students in science, technology, engineering and math courses. In one of the pilots, a professor from Politecnico di Milano teaching a technical course at the intersection of computer sciences and economics explains how he used active learning offering students different scientific challenges, asking them to solve simplified open scientific problems. In this process, team working was crucial. 
In this specific context, skills like the ability to identify tasks, assign them to the different members of the group, collaborating with others, leadership, conflict resolution, are of paramount importance. Designing an active learning activity is limited only by your imagination. See, for example, how active learning activities may be easily modified to adapt to a wide range of class contexts, small classes, large classes, and online classes. For example, the method called Think Parent Share can be easily modified to be used differently in the three different contexts. This technique requires students to think first individually about a topic or to answer a question, then share ideas with a classmate, and then share these ideas with the whole classes. Discussing an answer with a partner is useful to maximize participation, focus attention, and engage students. In a small class, you have more flexibility with space and logistics. Take advantage of this and get students moving. Since students are likely to be friends with the colleagues sitting nearest to them, ask students to work with someone new, perhaps sitting on the other side of the room. Depending on how many pairs you have, you can ask every pair to share their ideas with the whole class. In large classes, rather than ask a few selected groups to share their responses, ask students to join at least one other pair and repeat the exercise one or more time. Afterwards, ask students to submit their answers. This could be done electronically using clickers or telephones and apps like Mentimeter, Kahoot and Padlet, or this could be done in paper format using post-its. This ensures that students feel validated by their participation in the exercise. Online, if the learning management system you are using enables the use of private soup forums, you can sort students into smaller groups and ask them to discuss the question over a specific period of time. Once students have synthesized their responses, they can post them to a larger forum in which all students can read and comment on the answers. Active learning can also be used in online courses. One of the pilots in Germany was carried out in an e-learning course designed at the Chair for Sustainable Management. The course is open to students from all over Germany and is aimed at giving them the possibility to adopt a research-oriented attitude in the wide-ranging field of sustainability. One of the challenges of this course is guiding students along the way, thus using a purely digital format. Therefore, active learning, specifically learning videos, have been used in order to give students the possibility for a summarizing reflection on their own learning process, starting with the development of an interest in certain topics and ending with the formulation of a scientific research question. Many of the pilots during the COVID-19 pandemic crisis were forced to move online, and this, instead of being an obstacle, was a further enrichment for our project. As one of the teachers in Milan pointed out, the situation has been scary and challenging too at the beginning, but we think that the use of active learning was even more important in online setting in order to reinforce the motivation of our students. 